Hello and welcome to Listen Up, the final episode of Season 3. It's a little bittersweet. I'm still at coma. He's still Joey Trincali. We're rocking the NHL shirts because the NHL playoffs are closed. But we'll get to that in a second. We're going to lead off with our top five topics. Starting off, something a little different for us. Jason Collins came out as the first actively, openly gay player in one of the four major pro sports. How do you think his announcement changes the culture of pro sports, if at all? Well, first of all, I think it's pretty incredible, it's pretty inc- courageous that Collins decided to come out and announce to the world that he's gay and then attempts to continue to play one of the four major sports. It's an incredible thing. It's really quite the burden he's going to have to take on for the LGBT community as really this iconic person for them now, and, and that's tough. I mean, there's, there's going to be a lot of stuff that goes with that, and some of that's going to be good. He's going on Oprah soon. He's getting a lot of exposure, and he's a 12-year veteran in the NBA that wouldn't have this exposure otherwise, but there's going to be backlash, and there's going to be a lot of things that are going to be said, and when he gets back to the NBA, if he gets on the team, hopefully, it, there could be a lot of problems with that as well. And so I really do think there was a – Tim Brando had a tweet about – how Collins wasn't a hero because of this. And listen, if there's someone out there who is a gay athlete, who is a 12-year-old, who now feels a little bit more comfortable and feels a little bit better about what he could possibly do with his life, then you know what? Jason Collins is a hero in my book. But that's just me. I I don't know about the culture, though. I I think that's interesting. I think that it's going to take a lot of time to change. I'd say the culture that could be different is that because he's the first, because he's taken on that burden, maybe we kind of see the opening of the floodgates here and that other players that have been really hiding from themselves, hiding from their teammates, possibly decide, you know what, now is the time because I don't have to have that burden of being the first active athlete uh, to do it in one of the four major sports in North America. Yeah, and I think that I think there was a report, it was from CBS, where it said that there were four NFL players that were thinking about coming out, mm-hmm. and who knows how true that was, because it was nothing but anonymous source after anonymous source, yes. but I think it points to the larger thing that you were talking about, which is saying that now if someone has to, doesn't have to deal with the stigma of being the guy, or girl, then, <laughs> then I think that it means that we're more likely to see more people come out with it and realize that there has been a huge outpouring of support for Jason Collins, particularly from people in the sports media and from fellow athletes. There have been a lot of people on Twitter supporting his decision to come out. It's mostly been positive, and while you're always going to have the people that say dumb stuff, it also it seemed very positive for Jason Collins and very encouraging. But the reason that I phrased the question the way that I did mm-hmm. is I think that it's the infinitely more interesting one, the one to ask that... Is this really a first step of some kind? Is it the first step of many? I just think that, you know, there was an article on Deadspin today about a a former article that ran way back in, I think it was 1996, about Tommy Lasorda's son, who was gay. And the idea behind that article back in the day was that that would help start a conversation that we're only really now just having close to 20 years later. And the article wrote a postscript to that in light of the Jason Collins News saying, I honestly thought this would do it. I honestly thought that we wouldn't have to wait until 2013 to hear an athlete come out while still playing a sport. So I think it clearly shows that, you know, Mike Wallace, he's going to say dumb stuff. Yes. Davon Morgan, formerly of the Virginia Tech Hokies, is going to say some really dumb stuff. And so I think that, you know, it's just so ingrained in the culture to be so macho and even beyond that, to have so much of a, a, you know, a mentality that it's about the team, it's not about me, why should I talk about me? that it's going to be really hard before we see locker rooms become more accepting of this. I think that the reason why the culture could change is, one, we've seen America, especially in sports, it moves slow a lot. Mm-hmm. But I think that over the last just five years, you could say, sure. things have really, really picked up. And I think what this does with the Collins announcement, more than anything, is that now, because before, if there was no one else, no, no equals mm-hmm. uh, that you could point to, then... You know, someone could say something in the locker room, the spirit of the the macho basketball or macho football or whatever, and maybe it goes under the radar a little bit. But now I think what happens is that if you say something like that, if you're a Mike Wallace, then immediately you are put under the microscope and, and honestly persecuted rightly for saying some pretty stupid things that aren't really tolerant towards certain people. And so because of that, because he comes out, I think that in general maybe we can just look at the people that are saying the stupid stuff and we really can point them out for being dumb because say you know what look at this guy who's one of, a great locker room guy a guy that everyone loves yep. and he's come out and, and say your comments pretty stupid it's pretty <laughs> dumb and I think because he's come out I think that conversation maybe gets the 
gets going a little bit more. But I don't know. It's hard because, especially in football and even hockey, two really, really macho man sports, I think it's tough to just change that culture overnight, unfortunately. Yeah, and, and here's what I think is interesting. That we move to a point where if you say something like what Mike Wallace did, saying he didn't understand Jason Collins being gay, then you're going to be just have an avalanche of negative feelings. But my question is, how does it go behind the scenes for the things that we don't see? How do these people, even these people who might not say anything, who might even be supporting Jason Collins, really feel? And how does that play out with coaches, with players in the locker room? That's what I think will be interesting to see moving forward, because I strongly suspect that while having someone to humanize it, which I think Jason Collins can surely do, it's still gonna it's gonna have tension in the locker room, and I think it's gonna take decades before we see that move on. So hopefully, at least Jason Collins was a good starting point. I hope it's not decades, but I think that in decades we will look back and say, "Wow, this was a good deal. Of, it was a big deal, but it was yep. kind of silly that we had it had it to be a big deal yep. in the first place." All right, let's move on now to.